I wanted to give two quick updates related to this whole coronavirus situation that I'm sure all of you are very familiar with by now. First, these next few months are gonna be hard on all of us. Happy one year, everybody. <laughs> Julian Baker, Little Oblivions. Oh my God. The one thing that's been missing from Julian Baker's music for me to fully enjoy it. It's finally here. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Cloud Nothings, The Shadow I Remember. Is it cool that the Cumulus Absences were able to work on this record remotely while being in quarantine? Yeah. Am I able to remember any of these songs after listening? No. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, LW. At what point did King Gizzard become the microtonal, psych rock, steely Dan? Why am I paying an R&D department if they're not gonna be telling me about developments like this? MTS R&D. You're all fired. Cassandra Jenkins, an overview on phenomenal nature. Ah, pretty. Nick Jonas, Spaceman. Honestly, honestly. Pretty all right. I didn't even know this was a thing until Nick hosted SNL a few weeks ago, and I didn't have high hopes for it. But the production is engaging, the hooks are catchy, and while it's not gonna revolutionize pop in any way, I'd say it's Nick's best solo work to date. The biggest things holding it back are some lyrical clunkers, like this. It, it, it's like me saying to this coffee, wow, you put the drink in drinking. Nick Cave and Warren Ellis, Carnage. I found this record much easier to return to than both of the last two Bad Seeds records. Granted, both of them were emotionally draining for a plethora of good reasons, but I don't know, it's nice to have a Nick Cave record again that balances that density with replayability, which is where his best work, to me, often lies. Kings of Leon, When You See Yourself. I had to learn what an NFT is for this album, and I will never forgive Kings of Leon for that. Drake, Scary Hours 2? There is no way that March was a slow enough month that we had to devote extra time to a three-song EP by Drake, and yet here I am telling you that this thing is more brand maintenance than it is actual music. Who would have guessed that the ones we hurt the most are ourselves? Genesis Owuzu, Smiling With No Teeth. Hell yes. The Anchoress, The Art of Losing. It's like a beautiful painting in a museum. I look, I admire, I respect those who may fall in love with it, and then I move on to something else. Death From Above 1979 is for lovers. No, Death From Above 1979 is two dudes from Toronto. <laughs> Silly title, oh man. Uh, anyway, this is their best album since their debut. Lana Del Rey, Chemtrails Over the Country Club. Lana's discography follows a two steps back, one step forward progression for me. I'm not a fan of her first two records, I really like her third. I'm not huge into the next two, I really like the one after that. I was worried, after loving NFR so much, that the cycle would just keep continuing, but this new album broke it. And while it definitely doesn't wow me in the same way that NFR did, I can get down with the change of pace. Armand Hammer, Haram. Come for the expectedly stellar production by The Alchemist, but stay for the dense rhymes and lyricism by Billy Woods and The Lucid. If there is any justice left in this world, this album would make both of them huge stars. Tune Yards, sketchy. Ah yes, another beautiful painting. I admire it. I'm happy all of you like it. Goodbye. Juju, oh no. Juju make music that gives back to you what you put into it, which means that it doesn't really work with this quick fire format that I have. Given the album's more collaborative spirit, I was hoping that this one would be more accessible, and it really isn't. But for those of you who are willing to put in the time, I, I think you'll enjoy this one. Serpent with Feet, Deacon. Between the Drop Dead Gorgeous production and the intimate lyricism, I am sure that this artist is going to have a long and fruitful career. In other words, not only is this a serpent with feet, it's a serpent with legs. Justin Bieber, Justice. 
Last year, Changes was my go-to album for when I needed to sleep, but this new one by Justin managed to keep me awake. It's definitely more on the pop end of the spectrum than Changes was, uh, but that's a change. <laughs> that I fully welcome. There are even songs on here, like the single Peaches, that I would consider, get this, good. But the handful of good songs on here is not enough to cover up the fact that, for no real good reason, he samples Martin Luther King Jr. twice on here. And the fact that the album's not called Justin's. 